The regular Evelyn City Council meeting scheduled for 7 p.m. April 1st will all come to order. Roll call. Councilor Peterson? Here. Councilor Lillis? Here. Councilor Hadrava? Here. Mayor Vaisalovich? Here. Item C, approval of the minute. City Council meeting March 11th. Approval of City Council workshop March 18th. And approval of City Council meeting March 18th. So moved. Motion, Mark. Motion made by Peterson, support by Hadrava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item D, approval of agenda. Do we have to add item six, which will be our, our take on the uh, school relocation plan? That'll be item number six. Anyone add anything else to add to the agenda at this time? No, nope, I'll make the motion. Okay, motion made by Peterson that we approve the agenda. With the one addition of item six, do have a support? Support. Support by Lillis. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Under appointments, we have two for the Golf Commission. We have the appointment of Mike Newman to the Golf Commission and the reappointment of Camille Newman to the Golf Commission. Can we have a motion? So moved. Can we make them two I'll appointments? I'll support that. Motion made by Lillis, support by Drava. Any further discussion? I'd just like to thank both for their uh, service to our city. Very much appreciate it. Many, many years many of service. Years. It's, it's, it's hard to get volunteers. It's a tough business. And what's <laughs> <laughs> best for the town. That's right, Cam. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. At this time, we'll allow an opportunity for anyone from the audience who would like to address the council on any subject. I will allow time at the end of the meeting, but if anybody from the audience would like to address the council on a subject, feel free to come up at this time. I'm Roger Kachiever. I'm from 703 Auburn Avenue. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to address the council. Um, I have one, one question. I, I believe you're uh, scheduling the meeting on the uh, school issue uh, at this meeting? Yes, yes we are. Okay, I, I just have one question. Did you guys, or the mayor or the council, get any indication of this move from, from anybody in, in the process? We probably found out when stuff leaked out in the paper like everybody else. And to us, the thing was just moving so fast. I think it, it started in reverse. You should have had the public meetings before it progressed to this step, looking for funding to build something that no one may want or knows what's going on. Okay, that was my only question for now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Tom Calvig, I want to thank you also for the opportunity to, to speak about this uh, new idea the school board has. And it's, uh, it reminds me of what happened about 10 years ago when the uh, school board was trying to push through those dormitories for everything Gilbert, bringing all the troubled kids from the, the whole state and mainstreaming with our kids. And at that point in time, I was on the console and I could find no support for that. N nobody. Well, this is a similar thing. I've talked to at least a dozen people, and I haven't seen, I haven't heard from one person yet who, who supports this and who's in favor of it. I mean, we have a world class. Of the three high schools, ours is in the best shape. We have a brand new lab, new gymnasiums, two pools, new band hall, new commons area. It's a great school, and uh, it has a proud history academically and uh, and uh, athletically, it's a great it's a great school, and uh, there's nothing to gain for for the people of Evelyn. There's a lot less opportunity instead of having, say, three girls basketball teams, you'll have one. So a lot of kids are left out. That's true in all the different sports. I've been reading the, the Virginia paper, and uh, it says that the support in Virginia right now is pretty much non-existent. Uh, the mayor and each councillor said at Tuesday's meeting that they had not received a single comment of support for the plan. 
I think it's pretty much the same in Evelyn. Hannah's against it because it's not in Virginia. Uh, people I talk to, they're, they're against it mostly because we have a great school and it gives, gives less opportunity for, the, uh, for all the students, like I said. School play, you have, uh, instead of having three, you'll have one. Uh, the car buy it, you'll have one instead of three. So every, everything you do, there's a lot less opportunity, and especially for a smaller school like Evelyn. I was talking to a woman from Hibbing just the other day, and she moved to Evelyn because she wanted her kids to go to a smaller school. She said in Hibbing, they have the uh, class reunions. It's not a good turnout. You don't know anybody. You just know your clique. They graduated like 550 kids. And uh, you know yourself, Bobby, and uh, anybody who's gone to school in Evelyn, you know everybody who you, in your graduating class. It's just a, a great... A great thing, and uh, to give this up for what? And uh, for $108 million, can you imagine? And they said, uh, there's a few more uh, courses you'll offer. Well, you got the junior college, anybody can go there for free, take any course you want. It's a great opportunity, so. Um, I just wanted to speak in my mind that I don't think anybody is for this thing. It's very similar to what was going on 10 years ago, or 12 years ago, and the school, the school board, for some odd reason, thought the city would be in favor of those dormitories. And uh, this is pretty much <laughs> the same thing. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. A anyone else want to speak? Uh, my name is Tucker Nelson. I live at 915 and a half Adams Avenue. Um, and I could talk for quite a bit more than five minutes about the school plan, but I won't. Um, uh, I noticed that um, agenda item three was about the street and alley um, improvements for this summer, and um, it was a few the last, the last city council meeting or a few meetings ago. There was somebody who lives on Central Court that was talking about uh, the street improvements. There is the plan uh, to just um, redo the street of Central Court, or is that alley between Central Court and Adams Avenue going to be redone as well? Mike, maybe you can answer that a little better. It's what the project is, is just the alley reconstruct between Central Court and Adams Avenue. Oh, okay. Yeah, Central Court is not included in this project. Okay. So it's I just was, the alley. Okay. Um, I was a little confused about that because I was thinking that Central Court looks very good compared to the alley. Um, the alley definitely needs to be uh, repaired. Um, so that was my first question. And the second um, isn't related to an agenda item for tonight. Um, it was about the the restoration project for the city auditorium. Um, I've noticed that the city's website has been updated or uh, reconfigured, and it seems like a lot of the information about that project is no longer on the website. Um, and I was wondering if there would be a way to provide uh, more information to the public. Uh, this isn't a criticism of the city council, um, just um, some feedback, I think, um, it's something that the public would benefit from, and I'm sure they'd like to be involved a bit more, especially now that the project is um, kind of picking up speed from where it was four or five years ago. I think uh, we, I wonder if we could put the phases that we're looking at there. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll speak on behalf of Stephanie. She does the best she can taking care of the website. So she's been spending some time trying to clean up, reorganize. So she's in the midst of putting things back on the website. So we'll be sure that that's a priority because everybody's really interested and we've got lots of really good documents on it. So thanks All for right. that input. Excellent. Yeah, um, we'd like we'll a lot of public input on that building. Oh, sorry, go ahead. What was that? We liked a lot of public input on her because we hoped everybody would take an interest. Right. Um, and that was, I guess that was my other <coughs> question. Um, have you or are you planning to have uh, meetings involving the public on what they would like the building to look like or what it could be used for? I think we just had a multi-purpose use idea for it, and our main goal was to get it functional, so like the main floor to hold events, whatever, mm -hmm. have the facilities done, everything, and whatever the public desired, they might want to do with it further on, but just to get it usable was our main goal here. Um, Mayor and Council and the public, I have got the um, contract EDA coordinator working about on that and thinking about how we're going to keep track and what else do we need to do besides these improvements to get it usable because there's no tables and chairs, there's maybe no hangers in the closet, I mean, th things like that. So I've got him thinking about trying to put together a master plan of how we're going to manage it. We have um, come across um, some really interesting logs from the 
historically how it's been used. So Tony will take a look at that and you know see if we can duplicate some of those exciting uses from the past. And those EDA meetings and any public meeting we have on the auditorium are public meetings uh, where you could attend. Okay, they're posted. Because I'm definitely I definitely love the love the project. It's certainly a certainly a unique building that has, to my understanding, remained fairly. Um, accurate as far as its appearance to how it was when it was built. Um, We're hoping to keep as much of the historical appearance there as we can and to make it functional to today's you know, regulations and standards. Right. And we hope it gets a lot of use so when they finish it up and get it ready. I'm just hoping that thing is going every weekend or whatever. All right, excellent. Thank you. I sure appreciate the comments. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank everybody who commented tonight. It, it's nice to see some action and get some opinions on what we're doing here it helps us to do our job a little better if no one else has anything to add then i will move on to our consent agenda which is approval of payroll march 1st through the 15th and approval of claims for march 2014. and i have a motion that we approve the consent agenda i'll make that motion motion made by drava we have a support 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 by peterson any further discussion all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We have no public hearings at this point and no unfinished business. We'll move on to new business. Item J1. Approve ambulance safety and compliance officer appointment. And that is a Dan Peterlin. And it will be effective uh, tomorrow, April 2nd. Brian, I think that's your commission. Yes, sir, and I would make that motion. Okay. Have a support to that motion, and we appoint Dan Peterlin. I will second that. Motion made by Lillis, support by Hidrava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number two. Are we approving this resolution? Jackie, for that? Yes, please. Okay. Approve a resolution authorizing Benchmark Engineering to call for bids for the 2014 Sanitary Sewer Improvements Project on the 400 and 700 blocks of Hayes Street. So moved. Motion made by Peterson. Do I have support? I'll support it. Court by Hedrava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Item number three. Resolution authorizing benchmark engineering to call for bids for 2014 street and alley improvement projects, which these would be considered our overly, our overly uh, identifications that we're going to take care of. Can I have a motion that we approve this resolution? So moved. Okay. I'll support. Motion made by Lillis, support by Hedrava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number four, considering accepting quotation for furnishing fertilizers, fungicides, and insecticides for the golf course for 2014. You think we're going to golf this year, Mike? <laughs> well, with a little luck. It might be as late as start as last year, but I think eventually it'll happen. <laughs> Mike, are these okay? We're not going to have the MPCE chasing us around, are we? No, no. These are, well, these are as, uh, they're applied as safely as they can be. Can I have a motion accepting a quotation for the, these uh, chemicals for 2014 golf season? I'll make a motion. Motion made by Hadrava. Do I have a support? I'll support. Support by Lillis. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item five, this is oof, consider authorizing the public works director to purchase road salt for the 2014-2015 season. We're not even done with this last one, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you got a pretty good price on this. Yeah, this is the. Uh, this would be authorizing me to uh, request uh, salt through the state bid program, the cooperative purchasing venture. And we've never done this in the past. I've gotten the invite here in the last year or two. And uh, I know when I looked the first year, we had actually purchased it a little bit cheaper, $1.25 per ton cheaper than, than what the state bid was. 
My only concern is that there have been years when I've only gotten one bit. And uh, the product isn't there, I would not have the road salt. So I think by going with the state bid program, where not only are there be competitive bids uh, on a larger scale, but that we're assured of getting volume salt. We do offer some flexibility by asking for 125 tons. We have the flexibility of purchasing between 80 and 120 percent of that volume. So we could buy anywhere from 100 to 150 tons. Looking at the pile right now, I'm going to guess we're going to need 100 tons. Uh, last year we bought the most rock salt we have in the time I've been here. We bought 150, 150. So I think it uh, really covers the whole spectrum quantity, quantity that we could. I'll make a motion. Motion made by Peterson that we authorize the public works director to purchase salt from this purchasing program through the state. Do have support? I'll support. Support by Lillis. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I item number six, and that goes back to the previous public speaking session we've had here about this uh, school relocation. And I know we met with the school board and talked considerably. I know the class sizes are shrinking the schools, but I think there's a lot of alternatives to what this thing presents. And I guess it's just happening way too fast, way too much money, and the collateral damage from something like that hasn't even been considered. Right, and as a city councilor, that's, I mean, we're here to look at the economic impact to our city and, and work on that. And when things are being railroaded through and moving too quickly, we, we can't take the time to do our due diligence. No, and I, I agree with the city of Virginia on this, you know, totally. It's, it's just something that isn't right, and I think we should, Put a letter into opposition officially to council action that we oppose this plan the way it is you know if you've got smaller class sizes i'm sure you could combine some courses where you don't have enough students in one school or another and move them around you have the technical college there for different things well i have some uh, unique background with this and uh, i can honestly say i i can't support it at this time it's in, in, in its presence for in its present form anyway uh maybe there will be something that uh everybody comes back and agrees upon and, and, and it looks good and and then like beth said as a city councilor there's at this present time the way it is set up i cannot support it and i i agree and the the way it's been uh, uh brought to bear to this date um the cart is before the horse as we sit here and not nearly enough information available to the public not near enough information to make a informed or educated decision um, you know I find it remarkable that there's a site being considered in the city of Mountain Iron when uh, there was a study commissioned uh, just a few years ago uh, the there was consideration given to try location at that particular point in time and um, as it turns out on that particular as a result of that particular study Eveleth ranked as uh, the number two candidate for a tri-located school so you know with regard to what's going on right now I can't support it in in its current condition you know I'm all for sitting down at the table and talking about uh, uh, cooperative efforts no doubt but uh, the, the way it is currently I can't support it no, me either. I, I think by uh, taking a stand against this, maybe we can put the brakes on this thing until everybody comes to their senses about this. It's a lot of money and it's going to be a lot more because a lot of these projects just don't work. They're low-balling the costs, and once you're in it, you have no choice. Well, I'd like to uh, put forth a motion that we oppose the school co-schoolers consolidation plan as it has been presented making an official act I'll make that motion uh, against the proposed plan in its current form do I have a support to that motion I'll support it was made by Peterson support by Hadrava any further discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed motion carried
We don't have anything on the agenda any further at this time. It's Mike, do you have anything to add? Actually, a couple items, uh, Mr. Mayor. I received an email yesterday from Bruce Paulson, the engineer, or excuse me, architect from Stantec working on the auditorium, and he just made a note that uh, they are working on the restroom renovation plans, and they should have the plans and specs complete very soon. I guess two options for the council to consider. The one he brings up be the possibility of just talking to the general contractor that was recently awarded the phase two renovation and getting a uh, quote from them for this work and adding it as a change order. The other option would be that they would present some plans and specs and set locations. Be something that possibly could be done either way. The way the council would uh, well, like the quick, proceed with that. Quickest way would to have the contractor that's there look at that, wouldn't it be? Sure. Yes, that would be the quickest process. And uh, certainly, he even mentions in his email, if those numbers don't look good, then the other option would be false. Thought I'd bring that up tonight, and, and if you're ready to, to act on that tonight, or if you want to consider it at the next meeting. But they should be ready to move on that portion of the project. Well, why don't we talk to the general contractor there and see what his thoughts are on it, you know, if he's interested in even doing that portion of it. Good. And then uh, two other items just related to water, and we just want to caution people that uh, even if we get some days in the 50s or 60s and it gets nice, don't stop running your water. Uh, at this point, the frost is still down over 8 feet, and it has not started to thaw from the surface or from the bottom at all at this point. And uh, I would expect right now that we're probably going to have people running water to the end of April. It's significantly warmer. Uh, worst case scenario, we could even go longer than that, but we'll keep Speed. But just because we have some nice weather, don't uh, don't stop running your water. It will freeze up. Uh, the other thing, we just uh, developed a water leak earlier this afternoon in the 200 block of Garfield, and our plan is to start digging on that tomorrow. So the people in the 200 block of Garfield will be without water for a portion of tomorrow as we're reporting that week. Well, you guys have been keeping up with those pretty good, considering the volume of breaks we had. A lot of experience. <laughs> Eric, do you have anything to add? Uh, nothing to add unless you council has question. No, we'll wait till the bids come in. Right. And we'll be grilling you. <laughs> Jackie, do you have anything to add? I have a couple things. I just want to remind the public that um, if your water is out because there's a break and out for repair, you know, you can come and use our facilities here at City Hall. Use the um, restrooms, get some water. And also you can stop it at the fire hall. Um, and then secondly, um, Myself and the utility clerk um, worked with our software folks that we do our utility billing through. And we worked it out where that the bills went out yesterday. Are being, people are being billed for their February 2014 usage because it was late in February where you were told to run your water. Okay, So we thought that was the most fair um, reading to go off of. Now, if when you get your bill, you say, this just does not seem right that your usage in February was higher than it should have been for multiple reasons, you need to call us. And our utility clerk will take a look at it, look at your history, and then make the adjustments as appropriate. We apologize. There was no other way for us to compare your usage in February to the usage you reported to determine which one was the lowest. Our system just isn't smart enough to allow us to do that. So we did the best we could. We apologize if it causes anybody any problems. But give us a call, and we'll be sure to remedy any issues you might have. Anything further? One, one question, though, I forgot. We are going to have a public meeting concerning the school at the Hall of Fame on April 29th. Yep. We are going to post that in. That Absolutely. That be recorded and played back at a right. later date. Yep. You're going to do it at um, 6 o'clock on April 29th. And Hugo uh, reminded us that the school actually could be recorded and go live. So I will call up there and see if we can do it there. And if not, we'll just fall back on our friends at the Hockey Hall of Fame. And then hopefully we can have maybe Greg Schultzenberg come and record it and then have it replayed. We're going to give you know everybody another opportunity to speak their piece on there, whatever ideas they have, because it's a it's a public thing. It should get a lot of public input. It's an important thing in the community. A lot of jobs, you know, a lot of property values are affected, and we're going to hold that event there. That's all we'll be dealing with at that special meeting. So, uh, Mayor, even though it's during session, can we uh, invite our legislators? Oh, uh, absolutely. To hear that, considering they've passed bills already without that input. Yeah, it's, the, the money's there, and uh, nobody knows why it's there. 
Anybody from uh, Mitch, you have anything to no, add? No, nothing for me, man. Nobody suing us lately? No, they're pretty quiet at my okay. office. <laughs> Beth, too quiet. Too quiet. Too quiet. <laughs> Beth, do you have anything to add? Not currently. Brian? No, Mayor. Brad? One little update. Uh, tomorrow night, I think, right here at City Hall, we are having another Park Commission meeting. Uh, we've been working on the uh, Sliding Hill warming shack. Uh, we've got some basic floor plans, I guess, uh, in mind. and. I would like to invite the public if there's anybody who's got uh, any ideas of uh, what they'd like to see. Uh, it's not too late to uh, come say your piece and uh, maybe we can change some things to uh, make everything work. What time so, is it? Uh, 5.30 tomorrow. I was going to say 6, but 5.30, yeah. And then Mr. Ahole. Yes. You had some visitors this weekend out at your hotel there. And uh, their suburban broke down. And uh, one of our residents out of the blue offered up their pickup so these people could continue on while their pickup, while their truck was being fixed. Uh, so uh, your guys at the front desk were, I understand, were of a big help to them. And uh, they, they uh, indicated that they will be back and they appreciate all the hospitality. You know, I, I had an experience today. I followed the grader for about four blocks. And you know, you got to really be an artist to maneuver that thing in and out around the cars, grab the snow from the other side of the street. You know, it was pretty amazing. You don't take it for granted until you're going 10 miles an hour and watching them scoop everything <laughs> around. And at a pretty good pace, too. Clean things up. It's, it was interesting. I don't have anything further. Does anyone from the audience have anything to add? You can, it's your last chance tonight. If not, I'll adjourn the meeting. <laughs>